Champions League of Darts winner Mensor Sulevic. We have seen one absolute belter of a game between MVG and Gerwin Price with the world number one surviving a match dart in a thriller. And then we've seen, quite frankly, a masterclass from Mensor Sulevic, who appears to have played James Wade like a fiddle by slowing the game down until Wade became so annoyed and frustrated that he just could not match Mensor's level, which was a very good level. It was 102 average. And Mensor has benefited and has a chance of claiming another Euro Tour title. This, I assume, certainly from the pre-match exchanges between Rob Cross, the world number two, and Justin Pipe, the unseeded player left in the tournament, is probably set to be a more genial affair. And let's have this right. Rob Cross has been incredible all year. He's been superb this weekend so far. Justin Pipe, for different reasons, has been quite astonishing this weekend. He had not made a quarterfinal of any tournament since last summer. He has gone out in round one of most of the Pro Tour events so far this year. Admittedly, it's not that he's been playing dreadfully. At the start of this year, he's lost with some high averages, including 104 at the weekend to go in price. But more importantly than that, Justin Pipe lost his dad less than a couple of weeks ago. And he's come here this weekend because he thought that's what his dad would have wanted. And he's found a way to win games. And he's played some good darts in the process as well. He beat Darren Webster, the number 15 seed, with an average more than 96. He found a way to beat Ian White, the number two seed in the second round, and that's after seeing off Ryan Meikle with another mid-90s average in the opener. How Justin Pipe has done this, I do not know. First. Game on. But whether he goes on to make the semi-finals or whether his run here at the European Darts Open ends at the quarter-final stage at the hands of one of the four men in world darts right now, either way, he has been a credit to himself and his family. Paul Nicholson joins me, Dan Dawson, 96. in the comms box for quarter-final number three. It is the force and voltage. Yeah, I echo those sentiments, Dan. It's been a heroic effort from Pipe so far this week. And it's not over yet, that's for sure. And those exchanges at the start of the game, Justin did something that he could get away with it with Rob, because Rob's a, a light-hearted kind of guy sometimes, but there's a couple of lads I know that if, if he'd have stolen one of his darts from the table, I think they might have <laughs> exploded a little bit. It's one of those unwritten rules. You don't touch anybody else's kit, but... Rob's not like that. He's he's a really good bit of crack, that's for sure, in the practice room. He's been in a very light-hearted mood this week. Every time you look at him, he's smiling and laughing. 58. But he'd be smiling for different reasons because he really has been very good. That game today with Johnny Clayton was just brilliant. And the 127 was just unreal, as well as the finish. It was the, the real crescendo in darting terms. A 162, followed by a 140, five treble 18s with a double 16. That was as good as I've seen this year, alongside the Jamie Lewis 3, 4, 1, and 6 at yeah. UK Open. Well, look, the five treble 18s followed by a double 16 is, of course, the last six darts he threw to win the World Championship title, beating Phil Taylor to cap that extraordinary debut year for Rob Cross. And last year... He didn't achieve what he set out to. He did win a couple of titles. He had a good year last year. And I think that's what people overlook. It was not rubbish from Rob Cross last year by any stretch of the imagination. Semi-final of the Premier League, won a Pro Tour title, won a World Series event, beating Van Gogh in the final. It just wasn't Rob Cross smashing Van Gogh in all over the place, which is what I think some people expected. Double ten. Right on the wire. Goes the wrong side of it. It's unusual for Rob Cross not to finish a game of darts in 15 or less. And he's going to have to settle for something around 16 or 17 or possibly 18. You won't really care about that. It's all about just getting the, the chalk mark. Robbie required 20. Justin has had a couple of goes at Rob Cross. Lost them both. Lost one in Barnsley last year in the last leg decider and lost in 2017 in the Proto event just before the World Grand Prix, which Rob went on to win. Justin signed a new management deal 
at the end of 2018. He needed a bit of a fresh start. He signed with TCL, Tom Cousins Company, who also look after Conan Whitehead, Simon Stevenson, who had a fabulous UK Open. Oh, yeah. The last man to beat Raymond Van Barneville at the UK Open. Unless, of course, Barney decides to come back and play as an amateur in future years. I don't see that happening. What well, you don't think he's going to go to Rayleigh's next year? I'm not... Well, I'd, I mean, I'd like to see it. I think it'd be funny. I love how Rayleigh's would force him to wear a Rayleigh shirt yeah. instead of his own <laughs> shirt. <laughs> well, they did to former UK Open and World Championship finalist Wes Newton, didn't they? just didn't look oh, like the shirt that he was told to wear because Wes always used to wear red anyway. Well, that is true. That is true. Wes, of course, had many a battle with Justin Pipe. They had a bit of a, a bit of a blue at one point in the World Championship where <laughs> Wes made some remarks like he was going to sleep on the hockey. Yeah, it wasn't dissimilar to the game we just seen, was it? Yeah, very similar indeed. But then, wasn't it against Justin Pipe where Wes hit that nine dart at Blackpool? I think possibly. it was. Yeah, quite possibly. Justin, that's a good leg of darts. He's on to a finish after three visits. He was literally in amongst the crowd earlier after his win against Darren Webster. 59. Jumped off the stage, vaulted the fence there. And then just buried himself in a big German throng. Wow. <laughs> That's the only word for that. All of a sudden, the pressure on Pipe to hit these two snowmen. And he could well do it. He likes the, the straight shots down the pipe, so to speak. And there you go. That's a beautiful reply after Rob Cross piled on that pressure. Yeah, Justin does like those ones on the side of the board. He'll leave double 13 more than anybody else I know, actually. You, you often see it 100. when players are looking last two darts in the hand, they've got 62, they'll look at the 12 for ball, and if they hit the trouble, they leave double 13. But Justin will often elect to leave it. Yeah, something like 86. He might even go 60 for double, double 13. Mm. 97. Yeah, Justin, of course, is the only person left in the tournament at the quarterfinal stage who has not been in the Premier League or in it this year, for that matter. Yeah, I think that is a record. You've never seen seven Premier League stars. Nico Bloom. That is Nico Bloom with some new hair. Flower power, as he's known. One of the young German stars who we've seen on the European tour before. Yeah, seven Premier League players in the quarterfinals of the Euro Tour. We've not seen that before, I believe. And then, but you had the very weird situation where three games tonight, this is the only game from the quarterfinal stages, which wasn't a Premier League fixture in Nottingham nine days ago. Just plain weird. And there, we saw Van Gerwen beat Gerwin Price. That's happened. We saw Sulevich beat Wade. That's happened. We've got Gurney versus Wright coming up. That was a draw. So that, that's not going to That happen. ain't happening. If that happens, we really are making history on the Euro. <laughs> A couple of big finishes here. Travel 19 first. Feels like the, well, the non-typical way for shots like that. He'll 57. go for the 54 first on a 164. That is perfect. That is good. Now, the first start kinked down to cover the ball. He had to go to the left. Can he see enough? Oh, boy! Frame that one. That is one of the best 170s you will ever see because you couldn't even see the ball from the middle of the hockey. Phenomenal. There are only a handful of players on the planet who can nearly cover the ball for a 170. Justin Pike did, stepped over and pinned it anyway. Of all the 170s you are likely to see in this game, you will struggle to see a better one than that, technically speaking, at any rate. We've had camera angles this tournament that have shown just how much the flight dips at the back. As the point goes in, the flight goes down, and you can see how much it will cover it. If he'd have gone for the ball from the centre there, he would have hit the flight. 
Simple as that. Well, astonishing. An astonishing moment from Justin Pipe and an astonishing weekend from him. I spoke to him earlier and he said, I said, look, this is, this has kind of come out of the blue, hasn't it, Justin? I know that your personal circumstances are such where this is incredible anyway, but the fact is you've been losing almost all of your games this year. And he said, no, I've, I've been playing all right. And when you do dig through the stats on the Dark Connect system, he's not wrong. At the weekend, he lost first, he got drawn against Gerwin Price both days. He lost with 104 average on the uh, Saturday and a 97 average on the Sunday. Sometimes you've just got to take those ones. He, he lost with a 90 averages for most of the other time. He's not average below 88, so he's not having any real stinkers. No, he's not playing poorly, that's for sure. But no. I love your use of words there, but out of the blue, because his nickname is Blue. Well, it's, it's his actual name. You look at his passport, isn't it? That's the, the name that his folks gave him, Blue. Made a good headline, wasn't it? If he can get this tournament in the back. He was, of course, the first winner on the European Tour in Austria, where he beat James Wade in the final. 59. So... He knows what it's like to win, but it's been a very long time between drinks. It has, it has. Well, look, I mean, it's it was eight months ago that he last made a quarterfinal. He's not made a semi-final oh, of anything oh, since the back end of 2017, when, in Minehead, just down the road from his home in Taunton, he went on a run to the semis of the Players' Championship finals. Minehead is, is the place where he's done his best work in TV majors. Three-time major semi-finalist, all of them have come there. Well, it's pretty likely considering there's two tournaments there a year. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's the home of World Darts, after all. It's Rob Cross. Does he split this? I think he's looking over to the right. Straight for it. No, he's going out. Well, of course, Justin Pipe has got even more on his plate in 2019. Before this tournament, he was projected to be 68th in the world at the end of the year. So this run here... And the inflated prize money for a minimum of a quarterfinal, which is now £5,000. This is going to do his order of merit a world of good. And his chances of making the Worlds this year a lot of good. Because he didn't make the Worlds last time round. Yeah, well, Justin, yeah, he'd won 1,500 quid going into this weekend. He's already won twice as much of that just by getting through the final day of action. And it is going up and up and up. And they are big jumps. Five grand for this, six and a half grand for a semi, 10 grand for the final, 25,000 pounds in ranking money if you were to win this title. And Justin Pike knows how to win titles. Yes, it has been a long while, but it's not as if it's something he hasn't done. And he's done it against the best. When yes. he won his first Pro Tour title in Dublin. Oh, Could be Phil Taylor in the final. Yep. He's... Uh, look, 2010, 2011, he was a real... Uh, well, he was the force, but he was a force, a real force. There's that angle that you can see. <laughs> look how much of the bully can see. That dart in the 60. Yeah. Barely any of it. I don't think there's anybody in, in dart. There are plenty of players who have darts that go in perpendicular or just below but nobody has darts that go into that extent for Justin Pipe it's a very long dart that he uses as well so obviously it's going to go even further down the board I'm trying to think There's, there is somebody else that has them going really they dip like Richie Housen he's another one who's been on the Pro Tour and been on the Challenge Tour as well his darts were really flat and the flight is much lower than the point but look what he's left well, he may not get a go at it. He has to rely on Rob Cross missing this double 16. And he's not going to do that. Rob Cross hasn't been missing very much over the course of this weekend. And Rob Cross here, he was playing Johnny Clayton. Johnny Clayton is, does not mess about. That was a very rapid game of darts. He was running about the place, the ferret, scampering about. Firing in big scores and taking out checkouts. The one mistake that he made ended up being fatal because Rob Cross did not look back after taking out 127 checkout and he was just pinging in stuff left, right and centre. Ended with an average of almost 106. This is a very different game, of course 60. it is. 
it's a different kind of rhythm that he's got to settle into. And yet he is averaging up sort of 104 at the minute because it doesn't matter. Oh, it's actually dropped a little bit over the last couple of visits, but it's been up at 104, 105, 106 over the last sort of couple of minutes. 100. And Rob Cross is able to do this. It doesn't matter. He's not going to get hurried. He's not going to get flustered. He's not going to get frustrated. He's just going to go about his business. And his business, all through the year, is throw ton, plus, throw, throw ton plus averages. Curiously, it's not been enough to win a title as yet. It's not been enough to make a final on the tour. He did make the UK Open final, of course. And that was, unfortunately for Rob, one of his rare off games against Nathan Aspen who just ran out of steam. 45. Well, you can see from that angle just the, the dip of the, the flight from the side angle. And I think after that 170, Justin was just trying to stay focused and on point. You can see that Rob Cross's darts go in the exact opposite angle from the upright sense. 60. And that's a setup that hasn't changed much since he won the world title. He's had the same points. The darts may have changed ever so slightly, maybe a groove here and there, but aesthetically, nothing's changed. Well, he actually did, um, they were the, pretty much the same setup. He tried a, another set which had a slightly different, I mean, we're talking minor differences to, to the grip, but just a bit where he could put his thumb, but just went back to the previous ones. He had a point snap just before he was about to play in the Premier League the other day, and so he changed to a brand new set, and he's a bit worried about it. No need to, he still went and averaged over 100 again and won his game and he's been using these darts since they are the same weight and everything they've got a higher value of the content of tungsten so they're just slightly thinner and hey look they're working yeah I wouldn't change a thing right now bullseye he's going to lay up only just leaving tops but now this 130 is very similar to that 170, but he only needs 420s as opposed to 6. But if he gets 6, he'll have double 5. Now he's got to do it again. <laughs> Rob's looking on as if to say, not again. Oh, he oh, nearly oh, did. Oh, hit the post. Five. My Maybe word. Did he would... hit that one? I reckon he would have done that every time he had the bullseye. Wow. Double 10 for Cross to get a two leg gap. A look of frustration before he threw that final dart of the leg. Probably because it was an 18 dart leg, but it was huge in the context of the match. See from the facial expression of Justin Pipe after just missing that ball. He really is fighting here to try and stick with Cross. He's trying to put everything into this, Justin Pike, because he has not qualified for the next three European tours. But this will inspire him for the next qualifiers, which will be for Graz and Sindelfingen. Two amazing venues. Sindelfingen, the home of the European Tour, Graz, which was a new venue last year, which was nothing short of bonkers. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Great addition to the European Tour. Mensaville, next to the lake. Uh, but the, the strange thing is, you know, we're, we're talking about those next two qualifiers, which are, are coming up, not immediately, but they'll be with us soon. And therefore, Euro Tours 5 and 6 are only in the first European Tour event. That one brings us to almost the halfway mark in the European Tour. So if you've not been getting on the Euro Tour by that point and you're not making money, that's half your season gone in trying to qualify for the European Championship. But Justin Pike, as I say, whatever happens, he's done himself all kinds of favours with his run to this final session. I just think that Rob Cross is looking too strong. He may be too strong for everybody here this weekend. Because the signs have been there all through 2019 that Rob Cross means business. He's going to stay up there, isn't he? That'll do it. Yeah, great layup from Cross. One hundred and thirty-three. 
That'll do to get himself on a finish, but it may be academic. Can't see Rob Cross missing. And he doesn't. And that last leg of 18 darts might have been below par for him, but he's corrected that with a beautiful 13. Yeah, well, the, the other thing is that Rob Cross, as well as he's been playing all the way through this year, and he knows he's playing well, he still thinks he's got a lot more. Oh, my word. That will be frustrating for Cross. <laughs> Six perfect darts. No more. 44. Do you see any pressure in that face? I don't. A bit of a smirk from George Noble as well. <laughs> this game has been played in a magnificent spirit. Great to see. It would have been something else if Pike yeah. did it, that 1-6-1. Well, it would have been interesting to see if he'd done the little half step to the left and pinned 65. the ball right. But Rob Cross to wrap this up and book his place in the semi-finals. Treble 20 for double top. Treble 16. 60. Good lay up. Just Forces Pike to take this 96. 96. And if he doesn't get the 60, he might go double-double. No need for that. Just one double required. Double nine. That may be it. Because you cannot see Rob Cross missing this tops to put himself through to the semis. For another ton plus average, as he's been doing all the way through this weekend and pretty much all the way through this year. Double ten. Gets the job done. And Justin Pike, valiant run this weekend, comes to an end in the quarterfinals. His first ranking quarter.